So now let's look at a couple of examples of finding critical values for the t-table. I've just provided the pertinent information we need to find a critical value here, not the whole problem. So first thing you should notice is in the alternate hypothesis we have mu, which means we're studying a test about a mean. Because we have greater than, we have a right tail test, which means we're going to have one positive critical value. And because sigma is not known, we'll be using the t-table. So when you have a mean with sigma unknown, you use the t-table. This means we have to worry about degrees of freedom. So we look for our sample size, and we will be going to row 16. And since alpha is 0.05, we're going to go to column 0.05. But remember, it's one tail. So we're just going to have the one tail row. And we find 1.746. And because we said we'd have a positive critical value, we're done with that problem. Next example. Again, we're solving a problem about a mean. This is a left tail test, so we only have one negative critical value. Sigma unknown, so again, we're using the t-table. Not known, unknown, it all means the same thing. So we need degrees of freedom, which means we'll be in row three and look for 0.01 in the one tail column. Now remember, we said that we're going to have a negative critical value, so when we find our number under the correct column, then we'll have negative 4.541 for our critical value. Anything to the left of that will be rejected. You wanna try part C on your own and pause it and check. Okay, again, we're solving a problem about a mean. Because we have not equal to, it's two tail, and so our answer will have plus or minus. Sigma unknown reminded me that I have the t-table, which is the only thing we're practicing right now. Row 24 and column point 0.02, two tail, because remember we said it's a two tail test. So when I go to that column and row and find the number 2.492, remember we just put plus or minus in front of it. We don't need to change anything about that number.